Good morning, this is Leah Pinto, and I'm excited to share with you my STEM demonstration inquiry lesson for Inquiry Based STEM Education Spring 2020 session. So my, my uh, lesson was based on a NASA Roads on Mars challenge that I did with my STEM students. The Roads on Mars challenge, it's an acronym, ROAD stands for Rover Observation and Drone Survey on Mars. And it was a challenge that was put out by NASA that includes um, the students designing a rover for landing on Mars and then taking that rover through the use of drones, landing it on a simulated Mars surface and exploring to try and discover past life on Mars. So it was a pretty in-depth challenge. Um, my students love doing these challenges with NASA. Um, the grand prize for the challenge was a trip to Kennedy Space Center to see the launch of the Mars 2020 rover, um, which of course all that's been put on hold now with the COVID-19 crisis. However, the lesson that we did was one of the early parts of this challenge. And so we specifically for this lesson focused on how was the Jezero crater formed? And the Jezero crater is the landing site of the Mars 2020 rover. Um, it was scheduled to launch in June and it would be landing on Mars in February of 2021. So the question was, why the Jezero crater? And my students needed to understand how the crater was formed and why it was chosen by NASA as the landing site. So for our first feature of inquiry, the learners are engaged in scientifically oriented questions. These questions include what natural processes form the Jezero crater? Why would NASA choose the landing site? And why can this particular landing site tell us about the possibility of Mars life or past life on Mars? Other questions include what kind of land formations on, or what can land formations on Earth tell us about the possibility of life in the Jezero crater on Mars? Um, the second feature of inquiry after um, we have our essential questions, the students are focused on Mars, which of course is a huge um, pull to their imagination. It's something they get very excited about the possibility of learning. Um, they then need to actually uh, start answering the questions of how this crater was formed. And please note for all of these slides, every student in my class was, um, I have a signed permission form on file. They knew going into the challenge that their results will be posted on Twitter and, um, and shared via social media. So I do have signed releases to use all student images. Um, so as part of the inquiry, uh, process, the students were given an erosion table to help recreate the features of the Jezero crater. It was really, really simple. I made this myself. I got a big um, little uh, bucket, tin, a large plastic bin that you would use um, to store shoes or something in your house. And I filled it um, about a quarter of the way with various levels of sand and gravel, small little tiny rocks, and I allowed them to use that as a simulated Mars surface in order to determine how craters formed. Now, my students went into this with the understanding that a crater is formed by an impact. When they hear the word crater, they think the craters formed by meteors hitting Mars or hitting the moon, they, they don't necessarily see it as just a geological feature. So for them to begin experimenting, we had several large rocks. They had water that they could pour at various speeds and intensity. They even had some little plastic trees and boulders and things that they could use to create a simulated landscape. And they were said, they were given the instructions, how did the crater form? So how can I make this sand inside of the bin look like the Jezero crater? And they had plenty of images and research on the Jezero crater in order to know kind of what it looked like and what features we were looking for. And they started getting, they, they played in the sand. They played with mud. They played with water. Um, and they got to see how could this crater have possibly formed. So um, for feature three, they were asked to take these findings from the erosion table and compare them with landforms on Earth and on Mars. And so you'll notice some, some features that they may have been familiar with that they could compare 
the, um, the formations that they found in their erosion table. So they were asked, how was this crater formed? Was it formed through impact? Well, when you start looking, clearly the Jezero crater does not look like an impact crater. So they have to shift their thinking and they have to figure out what are some alternative explanations because it just doesn't match. And they were very quick to find that it was not formed by a meteor impact. Like that's just not going to be the same kind of crater as we're looking at. So they had to reevaluate their idea of what a crater is. And then they started thinking about, gosh, you know what? It looks kind of like the Mississippi River Delta. Does it look like the Grand Canyon? Could it have been formed through slow water motion? Or do you think it was a fast flood? And they played with the sand. And they several of them built large lakes up at the top of one portion. And then let it kind of burst over and see, was it formed like that? Was it a slow trickle? And they used all of those questions and those actual hands-on experiences to determine what features on our planet may have been formed the same way the Jezero crater was formed. And they had to compare those findings with what they know from the findings of NASA. So NASA has an incredible website on the Mars 2020 rover, um, the whole mission. And on that, that page, they talk about the different possible landing sites, why each of the landing sites was looked at and either chosen or disregarded. There's a total of 12 landing sites that they had originally started looking at. So the students got past the idea that a crater is formed by impact and they started to realize there was water here and it sure looks like a river that was flowing. It kind of uh, spread out into a delta. Um, they started comparing that. We live in Texas, in South Texas. They started comparing that to the areas they see near the coast. Um, and then they compare it with what they see on the NASA 2020, Mars 2020 page of scientists explaining the formation of the Jezero crater and that it was probably formed you know, through various water applications. And, um, and they used their data, they compared the data, they all got this insight of this was probably how it was formed. And then they had to share their uh, findings. And um, part of the challenge was really cool because they, they either recorded a short video or created a Google presentation. And they shared that through Twitter with the judges from NASA and um, through the program who were, who were creating this challenge. So they actually got to tell their um, their findings to scientists who were part of the NASA team. And so they were very excited about that. I have several examples of what those responses looked like. And again, I have full permission to use all of their images. I'm going to try and pull this up real quick. This is our first team. Hi, I'm Kayla. Hi, I'm Aubrey. Hi, I'm Natalie. Hi, I'm Sarah. And we're Team Pluto. The Jezero Crater was formed by a lake. Through a long period of time, the water spread out and formed a delta. This, this made a deserted wasteland of clay and sediment called the Jezero Crater. The best places to look for past life would be in the middle of the crater because long, a long time ago, water was buried, buried under layers of, set of sediment. Some trees could have been... Okay, so you're able to get the idea of what their presentation looked like. Uh, here's another example. A team just did a Google um, PowerPoint. This is the Germs team. It was a really cute name that they came up with. <clears throat> and they um, showed their findings through, uh, through the pictures and images that they created. Um, and the students did a great job of this. They enjoyed being able to share it with uh, authentic sharing with NASA scientists. They found that was far more challenging. Um, they were more creative in their responses because of it. So, um, and that, was, again, was just one part of the larger challenge that we were doing. We took this information that they learned about the Jezero crater, and we started applying it to how does that apply to finding life on Mars. And one piece of the challenge that they were going to be doing later on was uh, using a methane detector to try and see what possible things we could be looking for in this crater. And they connected it back to, you know, the organic elements and, and why NASA had particularly chosen somewhere that had had water in the past. Um, so that's my lesson. These are our references through this um, 
through this NASA program. And uh, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoy the challenge.